Hi everyone, and welcome back to a Rising Guy. The fountain pen world is well saturated with resin or plastic fountain pens, and we always need a bit of change from time to time. So in this video, I'm going to show you a few different other materials for fountain pens that you might want to get for your collection. If you like the content, please click the like button and subscribe. And if you are looking to buy your next fountain pen, notebooks, or inks, please check out a writing guy shop on Instagram or send me an email. And in my book, there are two types of metal pens. One is non-aging metal like stainless steel, aluminum, titanium, or gold. And the other is aging metals such as sterling silver, brass, or copper. Stainless steel is the most affordable one on this list perhaps, and there are plenty of pens available on the market made in steel. So I'm going to show you a Parker and a Schaefer, and also list out one that stands out the most, which is a Pilot Miu. And it is probably the most unique pocket pen style that Pilot has offered up to date, with the nib and section of the pen made in the same piece of metal. Stainless steel is simple, there is definitely more to it than meets the eye and they can definitely take a beating from everyday use. Next, that would be copper and brass. I don't have any available example with me right now, but they are pretty similar made and usually when a pen brand offers one, they would often make the other. We have a lot of options from Y Studio, Kaveco, and of course Keras Custom from the US. However, if you want something more refined, then you can take a look at Montegrappa's Copper Mule Fountain Pen. Next, aluminum. It is a really popular material for pens and it is lightweight, malleable. You can get a lot of different finishing and notable ones are this Muji aluminum fountain pen. Lamy All-Star, Lamy Ion, and some Kaveco Outsport as well. Next, that is one that I don't have available at the moment, and that is Titanium. And you can really go ham with this metal, and it is also used for fountain pen nibs as well. Creating a nib style that is not so stiff, like stainless steel. And notable candidate for Titanium ones are Enzo Puma and Ashvin P36. Now we're getting into the expensive category of metal pens and it is sterling silver. This one hits me in the soft spots as it is a really cool metal for a pen. It has some heft to it but not a ton like copper and brass and also the material itself even though it changes colors over time they do not become dull but instead getting unique patterns every time you decide to buff them back up to shine. Notable candidates are the Pilot Custom Sterling Silver. You can get a lot of variation from this. And even a Pokemon Charizard Custom Sterling Silver as well. Uh, this Gravon Fabric Castell Sterling Silver. And of course, my beloved Yodolette with their Viceroy Grand in Barleycorn Gold. Uh, there are kind of like three types of gold fountain pens. Uh, first one is plated, overlay, or solid gold fountain pens. Gold has always been popular in the fountain pen industry. So there's a plethora of pens to choose from. From the gold plated pens, we have loads of Parkers, plenty of those for you to dig in and find one that fits your style. Overlay gold are pretty much vintage ones, so you're getting into the older Watermans and other unknown brands. Finally, you have the uh, solid gold ones, and they're definitely getting into the ludicrous category of pricing, such as the Mont Blanc Soulmaker 100 in solid 18 karat gold and mammoth overlay. And on my desk, we have a Pelican. I don't have a lot of information on it yet, but there will definitely be a video coming up. Next, we're going to go back to some of the more organic material, that is wood. There are plenty of wooden pens out there and ranging from turned kit pens to high-end artisanal wood pen from long-standing brands. I would recommend the Gravon Fabric Castell Classic line and also there is the Briar Shell 3776 from Platinum. Plenty of those to choose from and you can also customize your pen as well. Ebonite. 
This is a rather old material in the pen world, as it has been used since the early 20th century for some of the earlier safety pens, and has really unique qualities. They have a similar feedback to resin, but will develop and change its color over time when exposed to sunlight or other environmental conditions. Notable ones are vintages, especially the Waterman Ideal fountain pen. And for the more modern offerings, we get lots of options from India, like Naveler, or getting into the more high-end ones, we can find Ebonite in Estabrook or Leonardo, Momento Zero. And finally, one of the most sought-after material for fountain pens, that is cellulose. And this is a tricky recommendation, as celluloid is also an old material in the pen world, and most of the more affordable vintages are pretty much all UV damaged and oxidized over decades of them being around, and modern celluloid foam pens are causing quite a bit of money. However, there are pretty ones out there, and if you know where to look for them, of course, we can never leave out the infamous Omas Aqua Bronze and Aqua Vef celluloid in a lot of their fountain pens. There are newer releases and custom made ones out there, but they're in the thousands of dollars. And in the more approachable range, we can also get celluloid pens from brands like Platinum, Aurora, and Delta. So, did I miss anything? If you have another pen material that you would like to tell me about it, please comment down below. And which of these is your favorite? Thank you guys for watching. And for more fountain pen related content, please check out writingguy.com and follow me on Instagram at writingguy for regular updates. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.